Now, some things in life needs little prayers. Some things needs a lot of prayer. There are certain things in life, you pray one hour, you get it. Some things in life, you need to pray 50 hours. Some things in life, you need 500 hours. Certain things in life, you can pray 40 years until Hashem agrees to give it to you. However, what happens if a person pray for something that for that Hashem decided in order for him to get it, he needs to pray 2,000 hours. And the person over his life pray, not 2,000 hours, 1,800 hours, and he died. What happened to the 1,800 hours? Each word is a huge reward. To lose, there's no way to lose. No matter whether you got it, whether you didn't get it, the actual prayer is a mitzvah from the Torah. You open up the Rambam, there's a mitzvah to every Jew at least once a day to have a private conversation with his Creator. If one day passed and he did not pray, he violated the rules like not putting tefillin. Same thing. The text in a Sidur, it's all from Rabbanan. But the obligation to pray at least once a day, every Jew, female, male, everybody has this obligation to speak to Hashem. You don't have Sidur, you speak to Him in your own language. You in jail, you don't have Sidur, even there you can speak to Him in your own language. No matter where you are, whether you, you have Sidur, whether you don't have Sidur, you always can earn trillions just by talking. You're on the road, you walk on Shabbat. Somebody invited you, it's 20 minutes walk. Most people in the world, what do they do? Walk, looking around, looking at stores, listening to the cars, smoke, smelling the smoke of all the buses. There's another way. This person walked 20 minutes and he walked 20 minutes. He walked 20 minutes, he said Tehillim all the way. Every step he made, he was earning mitzvot every step. You don't know Tehillim? I, I assure you, you know. You pray every day. Almost all the prayer is parts from Tehillim. You don't need, you can say the same is more 50 times. Shir la ma'alot, everybody knows, right? You don't know anything else, you say Shir la ma'alot 50 times. Huge reward. Walking and earning at the same time. You never thought of it. You walk, what do you do? Nothing. Speak to your friends, walking around, looking around, half sleeping. You walk on the way to Shul, you can say Mizmorim. No matter what you say, you can earn non-stop the, the actual mitzvah of being close to Hashem. It's affecting your life tremendously. But it gets even better. There's a big question, how confidence affects our life? I already mentioned that it saves us from pain, it saves us from agony, it saves us from heart attack, it saves us from so many sicknesses, it saves us from anger, it saves us from depression, it saves us from have to be a liar, it saves us from arguments, from fights, from all kinds of problems. It can save us right away with one month of efforts to elevate our level in confidence. Our life can be sweet, much sweet, peace of mind, everything. But it's something even better than this. Did you ever know that everything you can get in life, it's 100% in your hand? Did you know that? People happen to think, listen, I want ABC, and Hashem wants uh, DEF. There's many thoughts in the mind of a person, David HaMelech right? but always the advice of Hashem will go through in the end. However, we should know one thing. According to the level of the confidence that you have, this is how fast you're going to get what you want. Even if you're not so righteous, even if you're not so righteous, just the fact that your confidence in Hashem, that Hashem will not let you down and He's going to listen to what you speak and He's going to give you what you want. If you show Hashem that you have nothing but Him, you're not begging anybody, you're not killing yourself, you're not working three shifts, you're not working until midnight. You say to Hashem, first of all, Hashem, what, what needs to be done? Now I have to pray? I have to pray. After that I have to learn? I have to learn. I have an appointment, I'm losing money, I'm losing business, that's nonsense. Nobody in a history ever lost a penny or anything that you can call it a loss by listening and doing the wish of his God, of his Creator. It's impossible. Hashem is not worse than us. We, if somebody is doing everything we tell him, if we have a business and we have a, an employee 
that listens and is very faithful to us. He does a lot for us. He gives up some of his free time. He stays in his lunch break sometimes when he sees it's very busy. He cleans even when we don't tell him. He is trying to satisfy us as we are the boss. He is trying to satisfy us very much even when we're not asking him to do it. What's our reaction gonna be? We want to arm him or we want to benefit him? What's, what's the common sense even if we are not such good people? Even if you're not a good person, even if you're cool, even if you're arrogant, whatever you are, just the fact that you have two employees and one is trying very hard and the other don't care, you want to benefit the one who is doing for you, no matter who you are. You agree? Even if you're goy, even if you're criminal, this is the minimum of the reaction that we should have. Are we going to think that Hashem is worse than us? We, uh, we are so far from being perfect, we're going to react measure for measure. You're good with me, I'll be good with you. You'll be bad with me, maybe I'll be bad with you, which is also bad. But the fact that if you be very good with me, it's going to be very difficult for me to return bad to you. I have to be very ungrateful to return to you bad for the good you did for me. Am I better than God? Common sense. I'm not talking about the promises in the Torah hundreds of times that Hashem will will reward all his followers 100% without leaving a drop out. Everybody gets in the end what he deserves. I'm not talking about the promises. I'm just talking common sense without Torah. A person just born today never heard of the Torah. He knows he has a creator because he sees the world. He knows somebody is running the show here. It's obvious. And what's going to be now? I'm going to do positive things for humanity and I'm going to lose because of that? It's impossible. Nevertheless, when the Torah comes and say, my friend, the more you do for me, the more I record and put in your file. There will be a cash out day. One day I'm going to come and reward you in your end. The Torah says, to reward you in your end. When is it going to be the end? Only Hashem knows where. But one thing we know that there's a promise. So that you should know, remember again, a person first has to do what needs to be done. Later, if he has time left, he's going to work. He's going to make meetings, he's going to do, he's going to make some efforts. But as long as he fulfills his obligation, whether he's a man, whether he's a woman, plus if he's going to have some time for business, do business. You, don't have, you hardly have time for business, so you work two hours a day. It's a big mistake to think that you need to work more than two hours a day because if you're not going to work more than two hours a day, Hashem is going to be limited and He can only send you $20 a day because that's what you make, $10 an hour. So if you work two hours, you're going to make $20 a day. If you work four hours, you're going to make $40 a day. Someone who thinks like this is a big rasha. Rasha, big rasha. He has no confidence in Hashem and he doesn't understand about the way Hashem runs the world. Plus, he's ignorant, because what he's thinking is against the Torah. The Torah never say ever that if you're a genius, you're going to have more money. That if you have a, 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 a master from Harvard, you're going to make more money. That if you're going to be healthier than your friend, you're going to make more money. If you be stronger, you make more money. If you be wiser, you're going to make more money. Where? Where does it say it? Where in history you ever saw one prophet or any book in Judaism that indicate that the more efforts you're going to make, the more money you're going to make. It's, if any, it's exactly the opposite. The more efforts you put, you're hurting yourself. And that's what people don't understand. People who went to colleges and went to exams and another master and another degree and this and that and meetings and phone calls and walking until midnight, flying around, and in the end they made 10 million dollars, when they come to Shamaim, I promise you, Hashem tell them, you made 10 million, you could have made 20 million by working 1% of the time you work. Now what's the difference? Yes, you made your 10 million. You could have made it with investing almost nothing if you only had faith in me. And you, you know that what I promise, I'm going to keep my word. And then you would have also Torah. Now you only have 10 million, but you don't have Torah because you never had time to learn Torah. And what's the Torah say? Le'olam yaseh adam Torah keva ve'melachto aray. There's an halacha. Every Jew must make the Torah and the mitzvot his life. 
the main thing of his life, and business as a secondary thing, not important. By the way, like a hobby, it's a secondary thing. Why? We have to put a little bit efforts. The Torah says you are going to make a very little effort and I'm going to do the rest for you.